Cool. Hey everyone, this is uh, Brian, and I am here with my uh, video review of issue 194. It's, I kind of usually I get these issues probably about the following week, but seeing as though next week is Thanksgiving, I got it uh, yesterday in the mail, and I read it. And I have to say, it's, it's pretty good. It's a good lead-up into Hitchhog's Havoc. Um, you know, to be quite honest, the story was, was all right. I mean, I mean, you know, to be, I mean, what we saw in the first few pages and, you know, obviously gave us a good appetite for what we read the rest of the way. Uh, the situation with Fiona, well, you know, I think a lot of people are talking about that. I mean... When you consider the situation right here, if you can look at it, this page right here, where she talks about every time she trusts somebody, she gets burned, so now she's just looking out for herself. Well, the truth is, I think there's more to that than meets the eye. I think when she mentions her parents, I think something happened there when she was probably a kid. It has caused her really not to trust anybody at all. I mean... I mean, I mean, I could be wrong or anything, but maybe her parents abandoned her and she got captured by Robotnik. I don't know. Um, and then when she tried, when she got older and then tried to trust other people, they did the same thing. They abandoned her or they turned their back on her. And maybe, maybe that's why she's acting the way she is. And you know, the whole situation with Scourge. Um, when Sonic mentions the fact that. You know, after she tells Sonic that she's not trusting or relying on anyone, and, you know, Sonic goes and tells her, well, except for Scourge, you, you know, because you're fighting awfully hard for him, and then she has tears in her eyes and says, it's not like that. Something tells me it's not trust she has. It's, something tells me it's love she doesn't have a problem with. It's trust. See, she looks at Sonic saying she thought she could trust him you know, to be there for her when she first got captured a long time ago, but that never happened. But, anyway, like I'm saying, I think there's more to that Fiona situation, and possibly, as we go into the next couple of months, and possibly into Sonic Universe, we'll find out more about Fiona's past. I think it all goes back to her parents. That, I just got that feeling, the way she mentions it. Now, as far as the uh, situation goes with uh, with Sally, you know, calling a truth or alliance with Miles, you know, we all have read the preview so far of 197, and the fact it's called Consequences, and that there's going to be a hearing for Sally. Again, you know, Sally's going to be involved in the hearing to see to see if she's guilty of treason. The truth is. As we read here, as we read in last issue and reread in this issue, the plan was good and everything, everything was legit. However, she wasn't expecting Boomer, Alicia, Patch, and Miles to trick her. In other words, just to use her so they could get rid of both Sonic and Scourge and then possibly take over. You know, I don't think we were prepared for, I don't think she was ready for that. I think her main problem was, her main thought was, okay, we get rid of Scourge, and you guys can leave too. She wasn't expecting, you know, a double cross. So, I think, you know, what's happened here is going to be explained more, and I don't think Sally's going to be in prison or in jail or anything for what happens, despite what we see in the, on the 197 cover. I think she'll be okay. Now, as far as Rosie the Rascal goes, um, you know, I mean, Ian Flynn has done such a great job. I mean, obviously, Ian Flynn being a fan himself, knows how obsessed or how crazy Amy is for, for Sonic. So I guess he figured the best thing to do is kind of work on that and kind of use Rosie's obsessionness with Scourge to make, well, basically to make Amy look into the future of what, or make, well, basically make Amy look into what she could be. And I think that's what he's doing with this, uh, with this character. Because apparently Scourge doesn't want to have no pro part of her because one, obviously she did have feelings and he rejected it and instead of 
trying to pursue, keep pursuing him like Amy's trying to pursue Sonic. Instead, she ends up Sonic. Instead, she ends up going and sit, instead she ends up deciding, okay, I'm just gonna turn my back against you and I'm gonna basically kill you for not accepting me. That that's the way it is. And I think, in a way, Amy's kind of looking into what she could be. You know, thanks to Ian's writing. I mean, it's, it's, that is so good on his part. But, you know, I think it's... I think it's a... I think it's a good uh, issue, you know, doubt, no doubt about it. And the story, like I said, is a good lead into Hitchhog's Havoc. Because here you have Scourge basically pissed off at the fact that his team has turned on him and that he swears that once he gets his hands on them, there will be nothing left of them. And then you see the worried look on Scourge's face. They go, oh no, now I'm back in the presence of you-know-who. Apparently he knows how dangerous she is. You know, to me, to me, I think there's two sides of a story here. And I think, in a way, Scourge knew exactly what his team was, you know, really about out and so was with Amy, despite what, the way he acts. Obviously, being in control and in charge of his team, he knew what he was doing. And basically, trying, you know, being away from this Rosie the Rascal was probably the bit, was probably another thing he knew what he was doing about. But then we get towards the end of the first story, which is a conclusion, which well, is a lead-in into the Hitchhog Tavik, and basically we have Silver appearing here in front of uh, Robo Hedge, Hedge and his wife Marianne, as, they, as she's called, and basically tells him that I need to find this Sonic because the future, your future, depends on it, and I think that leads into Hitchhog Tavik, and I think apparently what the future is deals with um, the suppression squad and Skirt being in the wrong dimension and and Scourge and so on and so forth. But uh, that's all I have to say about the first story. I have to say it was a pretty good story. Um, and I can say a good lead into to Hitchhog's Havoc, a good lead into to issue 197. And I think Silver's going to probably be the one that deals with the suppression squad, you know, very easily. I don't know why. And as far as the zone cop goes, I think he's the one that called for Silver called for Silver's help is what he did. I, I just got that feeling. But I will be back with a review on issue on the side story of issue one ninety four.